My dad never wore drawers, ever. <laughs> this is my dad getting to his seat. This is all I saw. Excuse me. Before Kevin Hart won MTV's Comedic Genius Award, the People's Choice Comedian Award, and became a Hollywood star sharing the screen with The Rock, Will Ferrell, Ice Cube, and Snoop Dogg, to name a few. Stare into my soul, and I'll stare into yours. You are not my wife. Hey. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Before Kevin divorced from his wife of four years, getting joint custody of their two kids, then proposing to the smoking hot model, Eniko Parrish. I chose to make the most perfect decision. Honey, I'm asking you. Before Kevin Hart almost smashed his Mercedes Benz into a truck back in 2013 while driving drunk, catching a DUI charge with three years probation. I got arrested for resisting arrest last night. DUI. Uh, what else, baby? Is that pretty much it? Before he became the world's highest grossing comedian with 30 million Twitter followers and 400 million Instagram fans, bringing his net worth to an estimated $62 million. We meet other people to make money. You want to hang out with these people, but naturally, you want to spend money the way they spend money, but then you realize that you don't make the same type of money that these fucking people make. By the way, guys, his Snapchat, it is hilarious. Now, Kevin Hart, he was raised by a single mother out in Philadelphia, while his jailed, coke-addicted father hung over their family like a dark cloud. Things were pretty tough, and money was tight. Kevin actually slept in a bunk bed out in the family hallway, and he would eat tuna and sardines from a can on the regular for dinner. He used humor to deal with his troubles early on, but the funny man didn't consider trying comedy until after he graduated from community college. When he did finally get up on stage, he fell in love. Sadly, the audience didn't feel the same. With no signature style and him being too afraid to talk about his own life experiences, Kevin went through years of getting booed off stage. But when he finally decided to open up and poke fun at himself, well, suddenly things started to click. Oh, let it be known, all right? You're on the same page now. I don't like the fight. I've been robbed a lot. I'm traumatized because a lot of stuff has happened in the past. I'm gonna take a page out of Kevin's book and make fun of myself because right now I have a giant pimple. Kinda awkward. I thought this dope jacket would kind of distract you and you'd be like, that's kind of weird, but this is pretty cool. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCrudden, and welcome back to Before They're Famous. Here we're documenting the life and career of Kevin Hart, and it's an updated version. Let me know, as always, who you guys want to hear about next. And on this channel, we have done other comedians like Dave Chappelle, Key, and Peel, and uh, they're worth a watch. But for now, let's get into this bio. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Darnell Hart was born in Philadelphia on July 6, 1979. His single mother, Nancy, raised him and his older brother, Robert, in the city. His father, Henry, was a crack cocaine addict and usually in jail during Kevin's childhood. When Kevin was coming up, money was tight. He recalled in an Instagram photo that all he wanted for one birthday was a cake, and while his mom, she came through and got one for him. Also on Christmas, his mom one day got him a big wheel bike. And these were big moments in his childhood because, well, they didn't have a lot to go around. Growing up, his bedroom, well, it was in the hallway of the home, it was a bunk bed, and there were also cocktails cockroaches running around. Dinner was typically canned food. To help deal with these stresses, Kevin turned to humor, and I'm happy to report that him and his dad today, well, they are now good buds. The one piece of advice that my dad has given me is not to be a bitch. True story. <laughs> That's what he tells you? That's it. Hey. Don't be a bitch. He realized at 11 that his future could perhaps be in comedy. When his mom would be enraged and pull out the whip, he would do what he could to make her laugh. And she struggled to carry out the punishment when he had her in stitches. Anybody who don't believe in my movement, why so serious? He started to watch all the stand-up comedy he could get his hands on and looked up comedians J.B. Smoove, Eddie Murphy, and Chris Tucker as his idols. At George Washington High School in Northeast Philly, Kevin waited for puberty to kick in as his peers outgrew him. When he maxed out at 5'4", well, he decided he wouldn't bother with the basketball team. Instead, he signed up for debate teams and spelling bees. His mother was so persistent to keep her boy occupied from a life on the streets, she insisted that he take up a sport. So Kevin got himself on the swim team and competed professionally throughout his childhood. Kevin studied at Temple University for two years. He later moved to New York City, where he graduated from a community college. And throughout school, his friends and peers 
years kept telling him how hilarious he was and that he should give stand up a try. Now this was something that Hart had really never considered, but after hearing it enough times, he was convinced to finally give it a go. After graduating, he moved back to Philly and performed at every open mic he could under the name Little Kev the Bastard. Like most comedians starting out, Kevin quickly realized how difficult it was to break in. Not sure what his own style of comedy was yet, he started to imitate his idols and the audience, well they hated it. He was booed off countless times and even had some chicken tossed at him one night. Ah! A guy, the, a guy threw the wing at me. I was like, "Why are you even here?" That's what I was thinking in my mind. <laughs> he was like, "Hey, man, enough!" Yeah. And he just threw a, a saucy buffalo wing at me, hit me in the side <laughs> of the face. While he was moonlighting as an amateur comedian, Kevin was working at a shoe store, sizing up customers, a job he states he was really good at, and he thought he may one day have a future with Nike. He soon found a mentor in a veteran comic by the name of Keith Robinson, who encouraged him to be himself, perform under his own name, and take material from his own life experiences. He took this advice and the next amateur night he got on stage and absolutely floored the audience. He quit his job and started doing stand up full time at Philly's Laugh House, winning several stand up competitions and slowly climbing the ranks. He had also married a fellow comedian, Tori Hart, and together the two would have two children. Now a husband and a father, when Kevin was given the opportunity to fly to Montreal and perform at the world famous Just For Last Festival, the man did not disappoint. It was an ostrich looking at me while I was peeing. He was standing on one leg like this, his body was facing this way, but his head, his head was like this. Comedy King Judd Apatow tapped Kevin to play a part in the comedy series Undeclared, and with this credit and contact under his belt, Hollywood was no longer a world away. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I'm, I'm not gay. Oh, that's, that's okay, man, neither is he. You see, his name is Jesus. Christ. Soon Kevin was landing bit parts in feature films like Scary Movie, 40 Year Old Virgin and Soul Play. He even got his own ABC sitcom called The Big House. But that one didn't take off. Still Kevin's stand up was getting bigger and bolder and at 24 years old he had his first televised stand up special with Comedy Central. I'd show you a clip but Comedy Central they're holding on to those pretty tight. I don't be a negro be my nigga. Alright help me out. Oh, well, well, hold on, hold on. I ain't nobody's nigga. Kevin would continue to book work in television, film and tour as a comedian, looking to cement his status as one of the funniest new faces in show business. In 2009, his stand up tour I'm a grown little man, well when that thing launched it became a national phenomenon. And I really genuinely appreciate the support. Once again my name is Kevin Hart, I love you. Hart continued to land bigger roles and was becoming a household name. He would break records with his comedy tours and even reconnected with his father who has since cleaned up his act. As for the rest of the story, well you know the story because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCrad and I just got a text message from one of you guys, likely because a lot of you guys reach out to me on Twitter and Instagram. I appreciate all that. Let me know as always in the comments down below who you want to hear about next. Uh, I think that's everything. Oh we have a website, you can check that out. We have more footage and more bios on there. And yeah, I think that's it. I'll see you guys in another video. <gasps> Sweat and buckets, a jacket was a bad idea. It was there he met his future ex-wife Tori Hart. Kevin would graduate two years later and him and Tori would set out to accomplish their goals of becoming entertainers. In his hometown of Philadelphia, 